Hi hey guys, I just want to take, take a minute to talk today about the sum and product of roots of polynomials. Now, we've already talked about this with respect to quadratics, and we said that when we have a quadratic, which is ax squared plus bx plus c, we could find the zeros, and well, with the roots, we know that the sum of the roots is negative b over a. And then the product of the roots was c over a. And that allowed us to find the sum and product of roots very easily. Now, what I want to do today is extend this to all um, polynomials. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a cubic now. A cubic is ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d. Now, this time you have a possible three roots, so alpha, beta, and gamma. Oh, that's not a gamma. That looks more like a fish. Okay, there's uh, that's a little bit better gamma. Either way, we're going to deal with that. So, again, we're going to have the sum of the roots, which is alpha plus beta plus gamma. The sum of the roots is still going to be negative b over a. Even though it now has another term, the sum of the roots is still negative b over a. Now, there are proofs for this. You can actually show that this works, but I'm not going to take time with that right now. If you want to see it, you can ask me or look in a book or something, and it will probably tell you. All right, but so there's the sum. We also have the product, so alpha times beta times gamma. And alpha beta times gamma is now going to be negative d over a, just like that. And so negative d over a, so very similar. You'll remember this one was c over a, this one is d over a, but it's going to be negative. And so I'm going to show you why. I'm going to show you the general rules in just a minute. Now, there's one other thing that we can use. This one is not as common, but you can have alpha beta plus alpha gamma plus beta gamma. And so that is the sum of the product of all the different possibilities. Now, if you add those sums together, then you're going to get c over a. Now, that's why with the quadratic, we didn't need another one. There was only one possible product, which was alpha times beta, which was c over a. In this case, both of those will end up being the same thing. And so that's why we only had this, these two rules with the quadratics. Now, I want to show you the general rules for these, OK? So we're going to skip from the, the uh, cubics, and we're going to go to a general form now of, um, you know, a to the n, x to the n, plus a to the n minus 1, x to the n minus 1, and so on and so forth, all the way down to a to x squared, plus a x, plus, sorry, a 1 x, plus a 0. So that, those are all the coefficients, and we've got the powers, which are decreasing by 1 every time, la, 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 all the way down. So to get the sum and product of these, the sum, which is going to be those roots, all right? So the roots are x1, x2, and so on and so forth, all the way up to xn. All right, all the way up to, because there could be n number of roots here, right? Just like for the cubic, there were three roots, and for whatever order it is, there's that many roots. Then the general rule is x1 plus x2 plus x3, dot, 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 all the way to xn is negative a n minus 1 over a n. Now, you'll notice that this is always going to be negative the second number over the first one. So that's what it was here, negative b over a. Same thing for this one, negative b over a. So those are consistent with this rule, which again, this can be proved, but we don't have, we're not going to take time to do that now. Then we also have the product x1, x2, x3, da, 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 xn. And now if we put those together, then that will always equal negative 1 to the n power, and then a0 over a n. So remember, a0 is the last term. a n is the first one. And then in front, you have a negative 1 to the n power. That means for a function with an even order, 
that means that it will be a positive, like the c over a, because that would be negative 1 squared. For a odd power, then now notice I didn't say this was an odd function. It's just an odd power, x to the third. That means I'm going to have negative 1 to the third, so this will end up being a negative number. But it's always the last over the first. It's just if it's odd, it's negative. It's even as positive. Okay, so there you go. This one has a similar idea. This one will always be c over a. So this idea of x1, x2, plus x1, x3, plus x1, da, 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 da. And then at the end, you're going to have xn times xn minus 1. So all of these possible things being multiplied together, that will always equal a n minus 2 over a n, which then, of course, is always c over a, right? The third term over the first one. And so there you go. Those are your general rules. I, I don't really think that these are going to be so important to you in, in the IB exam and the IB experience, but you will probably need these ones right here. You'll definitely need these. So just be aware of those. Be aware that you have these for the uh, cubic function and that it can be extended then to this other idea that the sum is always negative b over a the product is always the last over the first with deciding whether this will be positive or negative and then this sum of all the different possibilities of the products will always be c over a okay so these ones are always and this one is close to always it's just the the sign changes okay so Hopefully that's helpful, and hopefully you're able to do those questions. This will be helpful on some of your questions tonight. All right, good luck. Bye-bye.